Hello and welcome to Teaching Bio. Today we're going to look at the six required practical for AQAA level biology. And this is the use of aseptic techniques and investigations into bacterial growth. So there are many important aseptic techniques that are needed when working with bacteria, okay? Um, so the first thing that we use is the agar plate, okay? And the agar plate is filled with agar jelly, and that is the sort of conditions, as an agar plate there, in which the bacteria will grow. Now, before we use the agar plate, we boil it, okay? And it's not boiled to liquefy the jelly. Well, it, it might be used for that, but the main reason why it's boiled and the reason that they either mark is that it's boiled to destroy any bacteria that might be in the plate before using it, okay? The nutrient broth is the liquid culture in which the um, bacteria will be found, and that contains nutrients needed for bacterial growth. So exam questions might ask you to suggest what types of nutrients might be in the liquid growth medium, or um, whatever is the context of the question is, and it's things like amino acids, carbohydrates, um, nitrogen, phosphorus, and you might say why that's needed. Well, nitrogen and phosphorus are used to build nucleic acids, amino acids for growth, nucleic acids again. So you've got to always think that they're related to growth and be able to look at why those ions are important for growth. So the aseptic techniques needed to win flooding an agar plate with bacteria are as follows. Equipment needs to be sterilized, okay? And this is through a process called autoclaving, which is effectively just a big washing machine that will sterilize equipments using pressure. So if you sterilize equipment using autoclaving, surfaces that you're going to work on, so the workbench needs to be rubbed down with ethanol in order to disinfect them. Okay, so that these are important control variables again in these practicals. And the sterilized pipettes or syringes need to be used when transferring bacterial culture. This is to ensure that the same volume is transferred so that comparisons can be made. Okay, they love, love, love the word comparisons in exams. So always try and shove that in whenever you can. Another technique is flaming the neck of the bottle. Okay, and what this involves is whenever the bacterial growth medium is being used to take bacteria out using a pipette, the neck of the bottle needs to be passed through a flame. Okay, i.e. through the flame on the Bunsen burner. Um, so you take the bottle, you open the lid, you flame the neck of the bottle, you remove the sample using your sterilized pipette, and then you repass the neck of the bottle through the flame on the Bunsen burner, okay? The reason why this is done is to re-sort of heat the area, okay? Warm the area that is around the neck of the bottle, and that prevents any contamination by bacteria that might be in the air. Okay, so looking at sort of practical skills and uh, practicals that we can do involving the bacteria once we've produced it in the um, agar plate safely um, is by using antibiotics okay so this this sort of ring of antibiotics um, so it contains this contains many many different antibiotics on there can be placed inside the agar plate okay and this will show what bacteria it could show a lot of things so where so these regions here are called zones of inhibition, okay? Well, those known as the clear zone. And the areas where there are large clear zones suggest that the bacteria have been killed. And where there are no clear zones, it suggests that the bacteria have not been killed. So the way in which we can use antibiotics um, experiments with agar plates is to see what concentration, okay, of antibiotic is affected and what type of resistance bacteria may have to these antibiotics. The zone of inhibition, i.e. the clear zone, is an area where there is no living bacteria, okay, because they've been killed. A lack of a zone of inhibition indicates that they're resistant to the antibiotic or that the concentration is not high enough. So, for example, the antibiotic um, in doxycycline could be put inside the ring um, and there could be, you know, differing concentrations of doxycycline as we go along, okay? So this concentration here is, you know, 0.5 moles, 0.4, 0.3, 0.2, 0.1. .1. So this suggests that the most effective concentration is the larger concentration, 0.5 moles per centimeters cubed. Um, likewise, so we can look at antibiotic resistance as well. So it could just show if you have a different antibiotic, so doxycycline and amoxicillin, for example, some of the bacteria might just be resistant to amoxicillin, hence there is no clear zone, and therefore 
um, you can show which antibiotic, which, which antibiotics work against bacteria. So they might ask you to explain antibiotic resistance, okay, and that's a type of directional selection, and it's in um, that you might be asked to explain how that arises. So obviously, random mutations lead to the production of antibiotic resistant alleles. Um, the bacteria survive and reproduce. This is natural selection, and then pass on the allele um, for resistance to the offspring, and so on forth, increasing the allele concentration. Um, scientists can also calculate an IC50 or LC50 value, okay, which has sort of been mentioned in some past papers, okay, and this is the concentration needed to kill 50% of the bacteria, okay, so initial concentration 50 or lowest concentration 50. Um, so why would a scientist calculate that? Well, sometimes scientists need to look at how, what concentration needed to kill 50% rather than 100%. You might be asked to suggest the advantages of that, which we'll look at in a minute. So some variables that need to be controlled when using these sort of um, antibiotic rings is that the same size of ring needs to be used, the length of the time that the ring is placed inside the agar plate needs to be controlled, and the type of material that the ring is made of needs to be controlled, okay? You can't not say that the same ring type needs to be used, that is insufficient, it's the type of material that the ring is made of. So, common questions that sort of come up, um, why is the agar gel boils, we've looked at this before, this is to kill any bacteria that might be there, why is the same volume bacterial culture transferred from the liquid growth medium, and that's to allow for comparisons, and ensured by the use of a sterilised pipette, what does the lack of a clear zone suggest, well it suggests that either bacteria are resistant, or the concentration of antibiotic is not high enough, okay? So if we go back to the antibiotic rings, um, another sort of way in which they could ask why a certain concentration is used, beyond these ideas here is that if too much concentration is used the rings might overlap okay so let's say this goes up to 0 0.5 if 0 0.6 was used the 0 0.6 and 0 0.5 ring would start overlapping the zones of inhibition would overlap and therefore you wouldn't be able to see the resistance because the rings are too big too much of the bacteria there has been destroyed so they could ask it in that sort of context so application questions that they could ask, um, here's one. So it says the scientists investigated the effect of different types of disinfectants on bacteria growth in the agar plate. They calculated the LC50 value for each type of disinfectant. The LC50 value refers to the lowest concentration of a disinfectant needed to kill 50% of bacterial colonies. Suggests three advantages of calculating an LC50 value. Okay, so some things that you can put is that this saves time. You don't have to wait for all the bacteria to die. Another sort of advantage that you can give is that the number of initial bacteria may be different. So if we use a percentage, okay, because it's 50%, that means that we can draw comparisons. And finally, if high concentrations um, were used on the agar plate, then the zones of inhibition of other disinfectants would overlap, okay, which is what I explained before. Therefore, you cannot see the effect of a specific disinfectant or antibiotic.